estamos en vivo. This is the city of the sun. El paso de Once again, on another live episode of Life and Talented. You guys, it's so cold in El Paso, so I hope you're keeping warm at home or wherever you're watching. Uh, you guys might be wondering why my set looks different. I honestly like this set a lot better, right? It's a lot cuter. I think it fits me a little bit better. Uh, but this set is actually the set for Unmatched. So if you haven't heard already, uh, we have a mini reality series going on and happening. Uh, it's going to be airing at the beginning of March, all right, on YouTube. So if you haven't followed us, go ahead and follow us. Uh, the mini reality series is under LAT Studios on YouTube, all right? We have designers, we have models, photographers all coming together to bring this amazing reality series to you all. So stay tuned for that because I am one of the judges, all right? So, you guys don't want to miss that. Uh, for tonight's show, we have a very special guest, all right? I met this individual through Instagram, and I've been inspired throughout the months that I've been following him, and you guys are going to see why. They call him the Cuban Missile. He's been working out since he was 17 years old, and he's now 32. Uh, he has an amazing physique, and not only that, you guys, but he just started his own wage trainer line. So I know weight trainers are a little bit more popular with females that work out, but he wanted to bring something different to the market, and he has a, a weight trainer called Paragon Weight Trainer. So follow him on Instagram. Uh, he caters a lot to males, all right? So he took a weight trainer from females, and he just revamped it, and it's amazing, okay? I, I use it all the time, and he has a lot of uh, tips and a lot of dieting tips for females and males. Uh, we actually recorded this interview a little bit earlier today and I'm so excited he's a great and humble and humble individual so I can't wait for you guys to see that interview uh, so let's go ahead and kick it off with our icon get discovered maximize your exposure and play at the next level prep one follow us on all social media platforms baila el paso baila L.A.T. Studio offers a full dance division with jazz, hip-hop, ballet, and contemporary. Visit latstudio.com today. Hello, El Paso. Welcome to another segment of Icons. Yes, I said Icons because it's now a new segment. It's no longer a local icon. We're going to be interviewing a lot more uh, individuals from around the nation, maybe around the world. We've already had individuals come from Vegas, from New York, and do, done a lot of uh, Zoom meetings. And today's special invite is from Miami. But before I in get to reveal his name, I'm gonna bring on my co-host. Yes, you guys remember her? She was part of Icons back at the very beginning, several months ago. And she's back to co-host with me this particular segment. So let's bring out Miss Larissa Posh. Hi, baby girl. Man, you look stunning. You look beautiful. How are you? Wait, don't have a seat. Come over here. Let's now uh, introduce and reveal who our special guest is. And uh, you know him. I believe it's been 36 episodes that we've already had. So this yeah. is the first Icon episode. And I'm so excited because I brought this guest today. You guys are going to feel motivated and inspired because... He is amazing. So not we're not going to tell you who it is yet, <laughs> but I'm so excited, you guys. All right, you ready? Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. His name is Santiago Aragon. He's from Miami, Ooh. Florida. 
and he's an IFBB bodybuilder. Mr. Santi, how are you? Welcome to our show. I'm good, I'm good. Thanks for having me. <laughs> the Cuban uh, Missile. Yeah, you were... Ladies and gentlemen, the Cuban Missile is in the house. <laughs> how are you, Santiago? I'm good, I'm good. I'm hanging out, seeing, uh, seeing what happens behind the scenes in a uh, studio production. Yeah. Very interesting. It's fun, it's really fun. And uh, how's the weather in Miami? Because over here it's pretty chilly, it's pretty cold. It's See, Miami during this time is very bipolar. So one day it'll be super hot, and then the next day you go out wearing your clothes that's appropriate for hot weather, and it's in the 50s. So <laughs> even, even though for most that's still not cold, I mean, you're, when you're used to the Miami sun, 50 for us, it's like the girls are wearing their Ugg boots, you know, they're, <laughs> they're, wearing, they're wearing the leggings, they're wearing mink, yeah. mink coats and stuff. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it's bipolar right now, but the sun is out right now. Well, that's good. The sun is out. I have a, a, a few friends, actually, a cousin of mine lives uh, in Miami, and she uh, or he um, manages one of uh, Gloria Stefan's restaurant on South Beach, uh, Ladio's. Yeah, no, they, those re all the all the celebrities have restaurants here. They all have the big restaurants over here. Nice, man. <laughs> so, uh, what side of town do you live on, Miami? I've moved around my entire life. I, I was born and raised here, but like, just like every every Cuban and every Cuban that would uh, watch this, they know Hialeah is where all the Cubans grow up. Hialeah. That's where I grew up in Hialeah, and then right after that, I went ahead and we moved in to Broward. So Broward is like Fort Lauderdale, it's more of the suburbs. And then I moved there, I went to high school there. I ended up moving to Orlando for some time for college. And then I moved back down, now I live in Doral, which is where most uh, most people down here, they call Doralzuela because all the Venezuelans live in Doral. Oh, okay. It's a little mix of everything. The cult culture's crazy here because you got every type of Hispanic that you could possibly imagine that lives down here. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, this show is designed to motivate and inspire uh, people around the world and, and you know, those that follow you, those that follow us. And um, uh, Larissa tells me that you guys met on Instagram, but um, I mean, it's so easy just to scroll one or two times and you get to see that, you know, you have quite a bit of journey. Yeah, I mean, it all bodybuilding and fitness for me started when I was 17 years old. So it basically started then, but I was a hockey player my whole life. And most what? people are asking, yeah, a Miami <laughs> Cuban played hockey. What? I, I played I played ice hockey for 10 years uh, travel. I got I, I got a scholarship to go to a school to play. And I was just clearly burnt out after so many years of playing it, you know, when you have a Hispanic dad, you know, that becomes every sport is like the thing, you know, I, I'm an only child. So you could only imagine a Hispanic dad. That's, that's what they want you to do. And, uh, you know, it taught me a lot of lessons that I brought into bodybuilding and business yeah. uh, later on over the year. So it wasn't so bad because those, those life lessons and those little things that you learn just from sports, they got instilled in me very, very fast, you know, as a young man. Um, and then after, after hockey, I'm like, man, what, what, that, what else do I do? You, you always have this competitive nature about you. Yeah. And, uh, and it was just, I was already in the gym. You know, when we played hockey, we, did, we didn't do bodybuilding type workouts. It was a lot of conditioning, a lot of plyometrics, things that help you for the season to condition. And once I kind of got away from that, so, I, I started picking up bodybuilding magazines and you know most people that watch uh, watch this and they're in the the new age they they all they know is Google and Instagram but if you wanted to learn something about fitness you couldn't just Google it no. you had to actually read and you had to <laughs> so I became a, a collector of magazines I would read these things cover to cover and that's how my bodybuilding uh, career started I I competed as in as a a teenager and I won nationals as a teenager soon then it went into the men's open division and uh, in 2014 I was lucky enough to get a IFBB pro card after competing for seven years you know uh, in this culture now you get a lot of people and th again this also goes for business instant gratification doesn't usually exist no. there has to be work 
behind everything that you do. So you can't expect that, oh, I'm gonna hit the weights for a year, I'm gonna, you know, compete and get my pro card. It took me almost seven years of nonstop to get that. And that's a true testament to anybody that's even starting a business of any sort. It may not work out in the beginning. It takes a lot of time and a yeah. lot of before you can get to that point. Absolutely. Well, I wanna add, what was your biggest obstacle during those seven years? You know, cause I know that sometimes we have a goal in mind, um, but bodybuilding is just one of those that you have to keep dedicated even when the motivation runs out, you know? So I think that the, there, there were various obstacles, one being finan uh, something financially, because, you know, as a teenager, you're, I'm still <clears> going to school, I'm not working a full-time job and bodybuilding and fitness, not only does it take a lot of time, but it takes a lot of money. You know, you gotta have your trainer, you gotta buy the food, you gotta prepare it. It's very expensive and very time consuming. That was, that was one obstacle. Uh, probably the second obstacle was just my age. At 20 years old, 21, 22, there's so many things that are out there that can distract you from what you wanna accomplish. And you know, such a young mind, uh, sometimes you don't you you know what you want, but you don't know the sacrifices that you're gonna have to take yeah, to get to that goal. So that was a huge obstacle because I would see my friends going out and going to dinner and going eating. I'm there with a Tupperware, you know, <laughs> my my fish that my smelled the whole freaking place and everything like that. So those probably two as a young man, those were probably my two main obstacles were were the financial aspect and also being zoned in on the goal yes. at hand. How old were you during that time? Or how old are you now? So I'm 32 right now. I'm 32. 32. Yeah, I'm 32. But when I got my pro card, I was 24. So between about 17, 18 to 24, it was all amateur, you know? And you don't make any, you make zero dollars doing yeah. that. You're doing it just for the sheer passion of yeah. wanting to compete and wanting to be competitive. Absolutely. Um, is there videos out there that we can maybe roll out and then check them out and you could you could YouTube I mean YouTube my name and just a bunch of content all right, we're gonna get that going just a little bit all right guys so you guys stay tuned content, for that old content and I, I could go through that you know I tried now now that I'm older and I have a business surrounded uh, by fitness I can actually document you know pay somebody to document my journey through prep and you know all of those things but as nice. a young as a young guy you know you're there to do the job at the gym and there were no cell phone videos and stuff like the culture now bodybuilding is nuts you act like you're so old <laughs> you know when he said magazines i was thinking you were like no 50. but but if, if we i came at a time where i you know i, I have this conversation with my trainer all the time because my trainer is very old school you know um i came in that at that cusp between the digital age and almost like the analog age, you know, where <laughs> where you go to the gym, you get the job done. But I also I also saw that part, and then I also saw the part where you're just trying to flex on on Instagram and social media. <laughs> so I, I I like I'm on the fence between both yeah. ends. Yeah. That I'm uh, you know I'm split between both of those two very different cultures. Well, we have more questions for you, but we're gonna take a quick break. We're gonna take a break to look at some of our sponsors, but we also wanna take a break to look at some of your videos. So before we go to our sponsors, we wanna take just a sneak peek of what Santi has done in his journey. Let's check this out. Tampa Pro. This is a back day at Infamous Gym, and today is a Saturday, and today's a heavy day. That's all I got for you guys right now.
Paso. We're going to take a few minutes to thank our sponsors. It's 2021 and it's time for your new journey. Get certified in phlebotomy, EKG tech, or nurse's assistant. You can make it happen in just four to six weeks. Freedom Academy, heroes in the forefront. Call now and enroll today. Business owners know that location is key. Look no further. Loop 10 Business Park is ready with top-notch retail space. Set in the corner of Rojas and Joe Battle, the busiest highway intersection in El Paso. This area funnels thousands of vehicles every hour to all quadrants of the city. Your business endeavors should be noticed, and all characteristics of a successful business plan start here. Become an owner and never rent again. We have accessible pricing and the deal of the century. This is the American dream. Call now for more information. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the Cuban Missile. Um, they obviously call him the Cuban Missile for a reason. He's been working out for quite some time now, inspiring uh, a lot of women and men out there. So. Uh, the Cuban Missile. How did you get that name? First of all, how did uh, you get that name? That's actually a, a funny story. So uh, there's a there's a uh, a guy that does. He's he's the guy on the microphone. I guess you would call him like a DJ or a presenter or whatever. He's the voice of bodybuilding, Bob Chicarillo. And when I did uh, a competition in Dallas two years ago, which I love Dallas, by the way, uh, I did a competition in Dallas, and we were we've known each other for years since I was an amateur. And I always, every time that I come to the show, he loves Cuban cigars. So I get, every time I know he's going to be emceeing a show, my dad, he always goes, yo, Santi, give this to Bob. Give this to Bob. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> so when I gave it, when I gave it to him, he just, it kind of just like the Cuban thing came up and then the Cuban missile crisis came up and then one thing led to another. And when he t called me to go on stage to do my, uh, my routine, he said the Cuban Missile. And it, kind of just, it kind of just stuck from there. So uh, I, like I, it. I, That's I thank cool him for coming though. up with it. You know what? I was thinking that uh, this is what, what it was going through my head when you were talking about hockey earlier that yeah. you were playing hockey. Because I, I was thinking maybe he developed his legs first because of hockey. <laughs> and <laughs> maybe he was known for his legs. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was missiles. Usually, people something call like, "Oh, those are some missiles, bro." Which it, which it would have worked. Now I look back, I'm like, "Damn, nobody thought of that when I was younger." <laughs> I, I could have been holding this, holding this name for like years already. No, but but yeah. And just to go back on that point, that my legs are my strongest body part, and I do have to say that hockey's the one that actually brought my legs it up. Triggered everything, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because of hockey. Wow, man. And um, I'm telling you that, you know, as an athlete, because not just as a bodybuilder, but as a sports athlete, um, you, you must have some sort of agility, um, you know, <laughs> speed, uh, motor skills, coordination uh, that allowed a, a platform, per se, for your mm -hmm. bodybuilding life. Well, I, I would say that it just gave it, like I said, it wasn't more of a physical thing. It was more of a mental thing. I mean, when you have, when I was growing up at like already eight years old, nine years old, 10 years old, I was waking up, my dad was waking me up at, you know, five in the morning to get ice time, you know? So this like over the years, you know what it takes, you know what it's gonna take to be better than the competition. So me waking up to do facet cardio every morning at, you know, 5 a.m. wasn't a big deal because I was already doing stuff like that when I was like eight years old. You know, I might get up a little bit, you know, sore and my knees might hurt more than when I was younger. But that but that definitely played a, a lot of those lessons that I learned early, you know, played a role to my uh, success on the stage. Absolutely. All right, Santi, now to the last part of our interview here. We want to want you to tell us a little bit of your accolades and your highlights. What has been some of the moments that have been highlighted your entire career because this is what you do now. This is what you live mm -hmm. off of. Give me some of those highlights. I have four different points that stand out in my head the most. Uh, probably the first one is definitely, and these are probably going to be in order, is getting my pro card. I mean, that's what everybody works for as an amateur. And finally, the, the fruits of your labor 
are there in, in getting that first place trophy and, and getting that, that pro card and being able to compete in the IFEB, that's going to be number one. Number two is going to be actually placing top three. Uh, this was when I was in Dallas. I placed top three against two Olympians that they were ahead of me, one and two, in a 212 division that I didn't even belong in. So this was a, a division higher than the one that I compete in. And I did it just for shits and gigs. And it paid off because I beat 15 other guys that this is what they do every single day. And I, that was like, emotionally, that was like, I didn't even expect this was going to happen. Uh, number, number three was competing last year during the pandemic uh, at the Arnold Classic. There was a lot of buzz behind that Arnold Classic leading into because it was such a big show and then we all got struck with the coronavirus and the shutdowns and everything and we didn't know we were uncertain if the show was even going to happen so just being able to be there and being able to compete and placing top six amongst the best in the world that definitely stood out for me and the last one number four is finally taking all the years that i spent in bodybuilding and making a business out of a product that gives back to the people in that compete and in bodybuilding. And I get to help them, you know, with their fitness goals or whatever it may be. And I have a product that they actually want to buy and starting the, my brand Paragon, uh, which is just a play on my last name, Aragon. Paragon has, uh, has really cha changed my life over the last two years. And, you know, coming out with new products, uh, in the future, including the uh, fat burning cream that I'm formulating right now, that's going to go hand in hand with the waist trainers. I mean, I started and this, this, I'm sure that a lot of people would love to hear this just because again, the whole theme of this is not, not stopping. Don't give up. It's going to take some time. You know, we were talking about the pro card that you have to allow it to give it, give get time to marinate almost so that you can feel like when you finally get to that end destination that it's worth something this waist this waist trainer uh, idea that i had was something that i had maybe uh i'd say about two three years ago and i was i owned a cell phone repair shop something completely different from bodybuilding and it and it just was an idea that i had that i knew that a lot of guys were wearing waist trainers but they never really talked about it it was kind of like a thing that you know it was a hush hush kind of thing <laughs> So I'm like, there's a market there for guys that want to buy waist trainers that they end up buying girl waist trainers. Why don't I just come out with a line for guys? Okay. And it all started out with one box of waist trainers under my desk where I was fixing cell phones. And over time, it just turned into two boxes, three boxes. Now I have a whole warehouse full of them. I had to sell the cell phone store just so that I could dedicate my time to the waist trainers. And that right now, that's my, that's my baby right now. Congratulations. I've seen that and that's so true what you say because I worn a waist trainer when I started. No, I got to send you one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you need to. I got to send all you guys true. one now. Men don't talk about it. Men yeah. don't talk about it. And I don't, they hide no. it. Um, I didn't even know that they that men use one till yeah, now. Yeah, if you, uh -huh. you can see it almost now. me wearing it in almost all my videos. I, you know, I'm not blessed with the smallest waist in the world. So it was very important that I used and by any means, even if it helped me by 1% on stage, I was going to use it. And I saw that waist trainers were, were helping with my breathing, helped me help my posture. And then now coupled with the fat burning cream, that's going to come out with actual proven ingredients that helps lipolysis. It's going to really change, change the game with, uh, you know, the combination between a waist trainer and a fat burning cream. That's cool, man. How exciting. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. So now, yeah, very an excited, entrepreneur, man. a full throttle entrepreneur. Full throttle. Full innovative throttle. pioneer of different things for men. That, well, I'm you have to, you, you have in a, in a, in a culture and fitness where everything is pretty much done and everybody's almost doing the same thing. It's such a saturated market. You have to find a niche in something that somebody's not doing. Yeah. And then when you do it, you're going to fail. And yeah. when you fail, you got to keep going. I could have stopped back when I was just selling five waist trainers a month, you know, and said, oh, this idea is not going to work. But I stuck with it. I stuck with it. I'm like, OK, you know, maybe I get a couple dollars here. Maybe I'll have drinking money for the weekend so I can party. 
And now I just, I literally let everything go. And, and that's all I do now. And it's really a weird thing when people at the bar ask you, so what do you do for a living? Like <laughs> I sell waist trainers. You sell <laughs> waist trainers. Okay, Santi, we've reached the last question. Okay. We'll make it short so we can get to our game. Okay. Um, what's coming up? What's next for you, man? I mean, you're an entrepreneur. You've reached, you know, great uh, accolades in bodybuilding. What is your ultimate goal? Where do you see yourself 10 years from now? 10 years, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of just rolling with the punches right now. You know, uh, I think that I had mentioned to you guys that I'm going to be moving to Dallas pretty soon. Yeah. So I Texan, don't know. Texan, baby, door, you're a yeah. Texan now. I, know, I, know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what doors are going to open over there. So it's kind of like I'm, I'm open and willing to, you know, to new ideas. If, you know, uh, business ideas, business opportunities. So I think all I can do right now is just focus on what I have in hand. Um, being as fit as possible, uh, taking my business to the next level as best as I can. And, you know, just be opening and willing to, uh, take on any new obstacles that might show up when I, when I do move, but what's the main is, objective of going to Dallas competing is, is competing is out of the question this year for me. It's, okay. uh, it's all focused on, on the business this year, the business side. What, yeah. What's in Dallas that you that you want to do there? What, what's why Dallas? Why Dallas? Just, uh, just I'm I'm over the Miami uh, the Miami life. You know everything. Okay. Honestly, everything is ridiculously expensive here with the pandemic. We have a lot of people that are that are relocating from different states, and uh, and you know they're all all just housing here is absolutely insane. Yeah. So just me in my personal life, I want I want to continue moving forward. I want to eventually own a home, you know, maybe a family one day. I got, uh, like I said, I'm the only child, so my parents are on my back 24-7. Oh, they're like, hurry up, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so uh, Miami, I just don't see myself uh, moving forward. It's it's holding me down right now uh, yeah. mentally, and, and I think uh, if I'm going to look to a better future, I, I have to look outside of what I'm comfortable at right now. and. I think that, you know, for some time I've been wanting to actually move over there. So I think that there's something calling me over there. I just don't know what it is yet. Hey, hey, it's <laughs> well, coming We're excited soon. to see what it is and to follow your journey. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Absolutely. But I think we're going to play a, a game, right? Yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready? excited about this one. It's a it. this or that edition. Um, I'll do the first part and then Larissa will do the second part. Okay. Okay. All right. 100 push-ups or 300 sit-ups? 100 push-ups. 100 push-ups. Uh, broccoli in every meal or spinach in every meal? Spinach. Okay. Ooh. I love spinach, yeah. <laughs> I love sa sauteed spinach. And, and spinach because I make, once I'm dieting and I'm eating like zero food, spinach, you take a pound of spinach and you eat it and you feel full. So spinach is the way to wow. go. Wow. Uh, Exercise without water or exercise without eating? Exercise without eating. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. I could get I could get a massive pump without any food, just with salt and water. And you don't need carbs, you don't need food like that. And I think that when you eat food, if you eat too close to the to the workout, you you get a little bogged down depending on what you eat. So I actually like training fasted sometimes. So uh, you would just water, have to have eat a pickle, and you're good to go. <laughs> I always have to eat something heavy before I go to the gym. Before oh, I can, I'm sleeping if that happens. All right, uh, a pill to give you the perfect body, or a pill that guarantees you to live to 90. A pill to guarantee that I live to 90. <laughs> okay, yeah. good. Here he has the body. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. We're never happy though. It doesn't matter. No, we're never There's happy. There's room for improvement. <laughs> never sweat or never feel sore? Never feel sore. Never feel sore. Yeah, yeah. me that's, too. Yeah. I, I like the therapeutic feeling of sweating, so it feels nice. Strong arms and weak legs or strong legs and weak arms? Oh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> I, I guess if you're not competing, strong arms and weak legs. I don't know. I don't know. They both they both kind of suck. Yeah, no, give me one. No, they both they both kind of suck. But I'll, I'll take the I'll take the big arms because then I could just wear a tight shirt. <laughs> okay. 
uh, running on a treadmill or only on an, an elliptical? I'll do elliptical because I can't run for shit. <laughs> <laughs> can't run. Really? I love running. I have little short, little stubby legs that it just looks awkward. <laughs> um, wearing a fur coat during a jog or wearing latex during a yoga class? Ooh. Uh, Ooh. Probably latex so I can get my splits on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I, I can't touch my toes, so <laughs> I can't touch my toes. Um, a mean personal trainer or a sweet personal trainer? Oh, mean personal trainer. Yeah. I'll get more done. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, teach an easy workout class? Or take the hardest workout class? Take the hardest workout class. You okay. set the bar high, and every time that you go by yourself, then you know what hard actually is. Yeah. Uh, Unless it's eat, Zumba. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's eat Zumba. whatever you want, but be forced to exercise every day, or have a strict diet and never have to exercise. Probably the first one. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. 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 yeah I was going to say. Consequences. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to let Larissa do uh, the next one. Okay. Okay. All right. Here we go. All right. This or that. Gym or outdoors? Gym. For sure. Burpees or squats? Squats. Yeah. I can't, I can't do a burpee. <laughs> I look miserable. <laughs> I don't think I've done a burpee in a long time. All right. Uh, well, we strength or it. cardio? Say that again. Strength or cardio? Strength. Pilates or yoga? Yoga. <laughs> yoga? Because, just in case that there's good looking people in yoga. <laughs> people in yoga. I don't know. <laughs> um, try to keep going? Yeah. Okay, protein shake or protein bar? Protein shake. I make the best shakes. Okay. Uh, jump rope or jumping jacks? Jump rope. I like those. Yeah, me too. Let's see. Uh, leg day or arm day? Because I want to or because I need to? <laughs> uh, arm day, definitely. Arm day. Arm day is the best. Plank or crunches? Crunches. If I can do like 10, then yeah. Without my abs cramping, I'll do them. <laughs> well, we've learned a lot from you, Santi, and definitely a very inspirational story. I like that you know you, you have a, a story to tell that can inspire many people, um, and uh, it's been a pleasure. I hope you become you know, part of this American big old state of Texas big soon, and Texas. when you do, we're going to go visit you. Oh, definitely, definitely. Uh, maybe we'll, maybe by that time we could, go, we could go to a football game. Absolutely. And I maybe like it. Larissa said, you can come over here to El Paso and you have a home. We can always, you. you know, collaborate and work on something fun for your brand and whatever. What is it? It's only like, what, four hours or something like that? No, the drive? From Dallas? Yeah. Eight hours, eight, nine hours. Eight hours? Yeah. Maybe, maybe in my car, four hours then. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank what do you, you guys drive for having me? I appreciate it. What do you? What kind of drive? Car do you drive? Well, I just I just ordered that that SRT Jeep. That's uh pretty uh pretty yeah. Nice. Yeah, I'm, excited. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited. Wow, that's dope. Well, congratulations. Once again, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Okay, El Paso, it's time for us to uh, let go of our special guest, and uh, it's been fun. You guys have a blessed day. I'll see you guys next time, Santi. Have a blessed day and uh, good luck in all your endeavors. Thank you. See you guys soon. You. Talk to you Thank guys you. soon. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you guys have it. Our first ever icon to come alive and talented all the way from Miami. A huge thank you and shout out to the Cuban Missile. It was a pleasure having you. I definitely was inspired to hear your story and something that really stuck to me during this interview, and I hope that it stuck with you too, is to keep going. 
You know, we live in a world of instant gratification, but you know, you gotta put in the hard work and you gotta keep going. So thank you for the lessons and thank you for the inspiration. Follow him on Instagram, ifbbpro uh, underscore Santi, all right? And if you don't have a weight trainer, you guys have to get your weight trainer. Paragon weight trainer. I've been weight training, I have two kids, I've been weight training for two years now, and let me tell you, I've seen amazing results. Uh, so I look forward to get on the diet that Santi is going to provide for me and keep working out and reaching my fitness goals. All right, you guys, so that's it for us tonight. I hope that you guys are all inspired and that you guys had an amazing time with us here at Live and Talented. We will see you next Friday. Get discovered, maximize your exposure, and play at the next level. Prep one. Follow us on all social media platforms. Baila El Paso Baila. LAT Studio offers a full dance division with jazz, hip-hop, ballet, and contemporary. Visit latstudio.com today.